That's what it is. I have a puppy for you. Amen? Praise and worship, come on. Yes, I am full of it today. Just wait, 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 wait. Praise and worship. Yo, y'all, come on, come on, come on, come on. I got, uh, I, I didn't do something that I should have done, uh, and it's sad that the heathens aren't here today, but um, our sweet Ashley. Come on up here, come right here. I know, I, I know, I know. Speaking those things that are not as though they were. As with my other daughter, my blood daughter, God had to search far and wide to put up with the high maintenance of the Ash family girls. Our Ashley is getting married to our Grant on February 7th, right? On February 7th, uh, she paid him big money, and he finally conceded. Y'all give her a hug and congratulate her. I'm happy for her. I'm happy for him because he's got a treasure. Amen? All right. And if I didn't announce it, I did announce it, but I'm going to announce it again. Stand up, Miss Alicia. In one week, she went from not showing to showing. <laughs> and she's having a boy. That's what I'm supposed to say. So I'm being obedient. And Nisi, though she's not here, is only having one. So I can never be wrong. She's going to have another girl. It's going to look just like that one. So that's what I'm going to start professing now. So everybody join with me in my faith. And then I need, the, I need half of you to join with me in faith to believe for the other girl. And then I need the other half to believe that Nisi doesn't kill me. <laughs> Amen? All right. What, what else announcements have I missed? Who else is pregnant? <laughs> Who else is pregnant? <laughs> All right. Who else is pregnant? I can't push it out as far as I used to. You know, I did that trick for so long. One time I stuck it out and it didn't go back. But now it's starting to. I know. Yes. See, he, he hates for me to call him his son, my son because he's an idiot. But I love him very much. And we're both awesomely good looking. And uh, we have the same taste in clothes a lot of times. And if you can see, we have, except he wore blue under, I wore purple. My thong is pink and his is white. <laughs> you didn't see your faces. <laughs> Come on, let's stand up. Who? <laughs> Come on, y'all need to loosen up. Y'all are up tight and all bound up. Let's have fun. We're in the presence of God. Amen? Yes, 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 we are. And no, no, no more Satan. Amen? Seriously, you need to come to, to the class. I really believe it's an important piece. I think uh, becoming who you are, secret place. Uh, I, I, there's, there's three others. They're really important into your walk. See Miss Vivian. I'll get the names and tell you next week. 
all the classes are good. All of them are important. But there's some that just will help you become who you are and who, what you're supposed to be. And I believe the church needs to understand that we're sons. We're not slaves. We're not servants. We're sons of the Most High God. Amen? We have authority. We're not supposed to be the tail. We're supposed to be the head. Amen? We're to stand in the righteous place with the Heavenly Father. Amen? Because not what we did, but what He did. Because He put us there. Amen? All right, let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning. We say yes to whatever you desire. Father, you've given me a word, but I'll sit back and let you have your way. If you'll come and fill this place with your presence. If you'll take over, if you'll have your way, Father, we love you. We praise you. We give you all honor. We give you all glory, Father. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You're the great I am. We say yes to you. Father, we come forth and we bring our first fruits, our tithes, our offerings, Father. We ask that you bless that, Father. We ask that you um, honor our giving, Father God, and be, uh, bring forth, as your word says, a blessing that we cannot contain, and you'll rebuke the devourer for our sake. We speak blessing over every dime, over every penny, over every dollar. Father, we call it forth in Jesus' name. Father, have your way this morning. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on up here and let's, let's break this thing that's trying to hold us back from the blessing that God has us for this morning. Let's worship him like he's worthy of it.
Oh, 
on every voice. Musicians, stop. Every voice in the house. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. And dear Heavenly Father, our heart's cry is that you would overcome us, that, Father, your presence would fill our rooms, fill our, our beings, and fill our lives to overflow. Your manifested presence, Father God, not your omnipresence, Father God. You're always around. You're always there. But, Father God, your manifested presence that we may know, that we may see, that we may understand, that we may comprehend, that we may feel, that we may see face to face. Father, you're worthy of all glory, all praise, and honor. And all God's people said, Amen and amen. You may be seated. God is good. Turn with me, if you would, to Joshua chapter 1. We all there? All right. 
Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, this, uh, how do I want to do this? Let's go verse by verse. Let's do it that way. <clears throat> Let me read it again. Moses, me, my servant is dead. No, go back to verse 1, please. Thank you. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses, Moses' minister, saying, <clears throat> Moses has passed away, and God then speaking to Joshua, and he's <clears throat> about to set him in place. Now, I want to look at, I want you to look at something, because I, real, I really believe that, um, I don't know if this is prophetically for us to go. Uh, I really feel like there's some things that's happened in the church that we're, there's some stuff that we're stepping into. So prophetically, this may be a declaration to the body, but I think this is individually over us as we are about to take uh, possession of what God's promised us. We talked a couple weeks ago about uh, some things of the kings that we needed to fight. I think this kind of goes along with this. Uh, I think this is why God dropped this in my heart. Because there's a lot of a lot of things about to change. For us, uh, the offices are, are are about finished. We're about getting settled in that. The daycare is over here. We've kind of settled and established this, and we're moving forward in that. Now we're fixing to go to Africa. Uh, we got some other mission stuff that's getting set up. And then I, my heart's my heart. I believe what the Lord's speaking to me is to open and start another church. So I believe that we're moving into another era and he said well why are you starting another church when we got these people and we kind of well you know before praise and worship we didn't have this many but now after praise and worship everybody's here but there's a lot of folks out and say you know they're in and out and what's going on well God's that's God's what's laid on my heart I said all that to say this is that we're moving into a new season and I don't think that that just happens corporately I don't think that just happens as all of us I think individually we have things in our life that we're that we're shifting into we're coming towards the end of this thing and and I believe that the Lord is, is, is bringing us into a place of getting ready for the end times. Now, that as a church and that as a, as corporately, but there's also individually, there's a lot of things. I've watched you. I've understood you. I've seen you. I've heard you. And I see a lot of things happening in people's lives. And you're positioning, God's positioning you to go in and take it. And, and this, it's time. It's time. We, we, we've come to this place, a lot of us in individual battles and things that God has for us, and we've stopped short. Uh, we sent spies in the land, and we, we figured we couldn't get it. And we've wa- wa- wandered in the wilderness for a long time. Amen? How many's been a wanderer? <clears throat> the rest of you are lying. So whoever's sitting beside someone that didn't have to raise their hand, elbow them real quick, all right? Um, so I, what I want to speak to you uh, is what God is coming to Joshua and what he's speaking, and I think it relates to us. After the death of Moses, now the word Moses, the uh, the, the, the name Moses means to be drawn out. Um, and uh, after the death of being drawn out, you, Joshua, which means Joshua, which means God saved or Jehovah, Jehovah saves, you are going to lead the people. See, at some point, you've got to stop being drawn. What I mean by that is we see what God wants. We see what God's desire. We see, okay, some of us come in here and, and, and God's going to fix a problem. We've got a bad problem and someone uh, has t- uh, talked to us, witnessed to us and said, come on in and, and God will fix your pain. God will help you p- come. There, there, People have been uh, destitute and, and homeless or, or drug addiction or whatever. And, and you hear the, about the grace of God, the mercy of God, and the, the beauty of God, the love of God. And we come in and we, and, 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 and we see the promise and, and, and we're drawn in by that. And we're drawn in by what God can do and what God has for us. And, 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 and the promises, we see all the promises. And then 
there's the prosperity movement, and, and there's a lot of things that, that are truth in that. And God doesn't want you to live paycheck to paycheck or a negative to negative. He wants to bless you. He wants to uh, 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 pour it out on you, and, and, but it's for his work. But so there's this drawing, this seeing of what could do. And some of it is just the love. Some of us has never been loved before. Some of us never had a father in our life to, to speak to us and tell us uh, who we are and what we need to do. And, and, and we don't know the Father's love. And we come in here and we get drawn to it. We get drawn to God wanting to, and, and, and being a father. And it, and it comes and manifests through men uh, of the church that, that are fathers. And we're drawn to that. Our, 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 we've never had a mother that nurtured us and, 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 and loved us and, and cradled us and, and, and loved us us the way we should be loved, and, 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 but despite our failures, amen? So we come to the church, and we see that, and we're drawn to it. But there's a difference between being drawn and being connected and, and, and getting a hold of what God has for you. You can always, there's so many of us get to the line, and we stop. We get to almost there, and we stop. We get almost to the promise, or we get a taste of the promise. We bring some fruit back from the promised land, but we don't live in the promised land. Uh, the best way for me to explain it is if you start, you start getting your bills paid and you start paying your bills, and we think we've arrived at the promised land. No, that's not the promised land. Getting your bills paid and living paycheck to paycheck and not negative anymore is not the promised land. The Lord desires for you to be blessed abundantly, that you may be a blessing to others. Amen. God doesn't want to just change your character so you're nice to, uh, uh, to your family. He wants you to change your character so you can be nice to the world. He doesn't want you to steal anymore, not so you won't steal some stuff, but that you will begin to give. He's taking you to a place, to a promised land. And so many of us fall short because we're drawn. See, I would never have married Annette and never had the kids if I hadn't of if I had always been drawn. At some point I had to say yes. You can stop chasing me now. I'll give you my lovely self. Because you know me so well. <laughs> See, you can aspire to be an athlete. You can aspire to be a teacher. You can aspire to be a business owner. You can aspire to all that, and that draws you to it. But until you commit to it, And see, well, that's what God's doing here. He's saying, look, uh, the people can't lo no longer be drawn. They have to be led by Jesus See, your soul is drawn, but at some point your soul has to be converted over to your spirit and give full access to the Spirit of God and let the Spirit lead you. See, Jesus is not just a character on a cross. Jesus is the anointed Word of God, and the anointed Word of God has to, we have to, re be, uh, re we have to receive it. We can't just be drawn to it. We can't be drawn to the sacrifice we, He made. We can't be drawn to, to the, the things that He can give us. We have to be one with Him. I'm glad a few of you like that. See, Joshua represents Jehovah saves, which represents Jesus, right? So Joshua represents the word. At some point, the word has to lead you. Okay, at some point, the word has to take over in your life. It's like this, all right, and, and I'm using money because it's the easiest one to give the example for, but it can be in everything and every desire of your life. You can be drawn to, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, uh, I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I don't want to, I don't want to barely get by. And you come to the church and they talk about tithing and you'll be blessed. Well, you can be drawn to that and then you can see people with money and you see they're giving people, and, you know, they, you see them hand money to people, you see them buy food for people, they, they bring stuff and, 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 and you're, you're like, I want some of that. You can be drawn to the blessing. You, can, you know, your car's broke down all the time. You're, you, you're always late on your rent. You're always, uh, 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 things are, uh, you're always losing things. And, and you got this, this person over here beside you that everything, everything they touch is, is blessed. Don't they just irritate you? Amen. Well, it's because what happens is they're, they're drawn but they don't let the word take over. See, the people that are blessed and are operating in it, 
they let the, Lord, the word begin to lead them. They weren't just drawn by it. It's just like being saved. You can be drawn to the story, but unless you say yes to the pull, you don't get to heaven. Right? We're drawn too much. See, being drawn is every time the songs go, you come up here and you're all into it. Kumbaya, Lord. You cry. Some people get all excited and dance around like Pastor Annette because they've moved past mourning into rejoicing. You can dance and you can have all of these, these things. You can be drawn to all this, but unless you get converted, See, because there's a lot of good stuff in it. But I see so many people come up here and they bawl and they squall and they, that nothing changes in their lives. Nothing. The prophet comes in and we all come in and want to hear the prophet unless we've been really sinned and we don't want to hear him air our dirty laundry. But we, we, the prophet comes in and starts speaking. We got a lot of people that prophesy in here, so we don't really have, like back in the old days, we used to bring prophets in here. We allow the spirit to move all the time, not just once a month. <clears throat> Or once a quarter. So you get these prophecies and God speaking these things. He's drawing you. See, God says over you, you're to be a preacher to the nations or you're to have this business. And he prophesies over, all over to you. That's the drawing. The letting the word lead you is then walking it out. Going through the desert. Going through the difficult times. Going through the issues. Going through the problems. That's walking it out. And see, that's what, that's what God is doing is he is taking us from being drawn to being led by the word. Verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people. Now, notice that it's all these pe- this people. He includes that because Jesus just can't arise in you. You've got to be a part of it. And I've told you before, Israel represents rule, uh, means rule as God, and Israel represents us as a person. Whatever God did to Israel, God wants to do for you, all right? And so my, my, Moses, my servant, my, I'm no longer going to draw you. <laughs> Come on, y'all, y'all snap out of it. Bow your heads. Say this prayer. Lord, help me. Stop being distracted. My wife stopped irritating me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. He's saying, no longer are you going to be drawn. And you say, well, God stops drawing you? No, that's not what I'm saying. You're no longer going to be, it's time to stop being drawn by things. It's time to make a commitment. It's time for, for Jesus to take you to the place of descending and putting him over you. The word Jordan means descending. In other words, I want you to bend down, and I want you to uh, allow Jesus to rise up in you. And I, Jesus, I want you to lead them out. I want you to lead them into the promised land. So we have to bow ourselves and allow that word to come into our hearts and come into us and take over us and lead us into what the promised land that God has for us. It's time to quit being drawn to the promise and go get the promise. It's time to stop waiting. It's time to stop li- uh, sitting back. It's time to go in and get it. Now, that doesn't mean for you to start the ministry right now. That means to stop waiting on it to happen and start pressing on and going forth and letting God open the sea, let God take take you to the place where there's a wilderness and he's got to feed you daily, where he's got to take you to bring you through battles that, that you, there's no way that you can win. All of that's got to happen. It's not to the promised land. It's now let me lead you through. And let me tell you, it's not a bed of roses. It's not easy. That's why you got to let him lead. That's why you've got to be, in, let him be in control. Because you can't do it on your own. We can't do it on our own. And if we'll allow the the word to rise up in us and become our leader, we're going to go take the promised land. What's your promised land? What's your promise? What, What has been on your heart? What have you been believing for? What have you wanted? What have you desired? 
We talked about it in Sunday school this morning. Every, heart, every thought, every desire, every, everything that comes out of us is a, it's, starts pure. Even sex, it starts pure. But it gets perverted by Satan. Right? So money, job, family, ministry, all of those things that are in you, there are great desires. But when we take over, when we allow Satan to be in control, what we do is we allow him to pervert it. But if we allow the Lord to give us the vision, then he'll say, come on, I'm going to take you through, and I'm going to take you step by step through your promised land. But you've got to allow jo- 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 Joshua, Jesus, the word of God, to lead you. You cannot do it with Moses. You cannot go into the promised land with Moses. You can't obtain the promised land with Moses. You can only do it with Jesus. You can't become what God's called you to be by just being drawn. You've got to become what God wants you to be only by Jesus being the lead of your heart. Amen? Thou and all this people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. In other words, Jesus, I'm not giving this to you. It's all yours anyway. I'm going to let them experience what is ours. I told them I would give them a piece of you. Amen? Next verse. I'm glad y'all are excited today. Somebody reach over and pinch somebody so that we can have at least one shout. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you as I said unto Moses. Every place that you tread upon, I've given to you. Now, Now listen to this. Jesus, everything is Jesus's. Everything that he made is his. And everything that was made was his. John 1.1. 1, 1. So he's saying, he's reinforcing, Joshua, everything's yours. Every place that you step is yours. But because he's leading Israel, it's theirs as well. So it's already his. Now if Israel will follow with him, they'll obtain the same thing. See where I'm going? Okay, so every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that's yours. Every place you take a step. Now, if you break down these words, the place, every place that the soul and your foot shall tread upon, if you break those down those words, what this says is every place that your foot hits and you put under your foot is yours. Now, where do we hear that? Put the enemy under our foot, right? So I put the enemy under my foot, okay. And then he said, he said if you'll walk out, walk with me, I'll make you rulers of much if you'll be faithful with little, right? Okay, every place that you put your your foot, but you have to receive it. See, if we we if we if we go into the New Testament, Jesus says, "For those that will believe and receive, they I've given them to have the powers to be sons." So He says, "If you receive, if you believe, you can have it." Right. Well, in the Old Testament, it says the same thing. See that word. That every place the sole of your foot shall tread, that word tread means to receive. And that word soul, that means it, it means the cup, the, the palm, but it also means what's curved. And if you break it down even more, it beca- it's what's bent. In other words, what bends over. And then if you look at uh, the word foot, let me get my, let me get my notes right. Every place that you tread, that word tread is to walk out, but it also means to bend like a bow. So every place that you bend to the word. In other words, I want Jesus to rise up in you, and I want you to cross over descending. I want you to bow down, and I want you to bend or conform to what I'm telling you, okay? And then it says, uh, for every place that you tread, and, and, and the sole of your foot shall 
uh, the, the sole of your, sh- your foot, every place that that puts. That word sole, it's cough at root, it means to bow down. The root of it means to bow down, but it means power. And the word foot, it means, it, it translates to endure, but it also means genitals. Every time I minister to you guys, I talk to you about producing with God. And a lot of times this comes up. And I preached this message a couple months ago, maybe six months, maybe a year ago. And I, and I broke these words down, and, and the Lord laid it on my heart again today. Uh, and, and I feel it's imperative that we understand what God wants to do with you. He is, through me, begging you, pleading with you to rise up and go get what he's promised. Every time I preach to you guys, when I'm funny, you guys are all into it. When I'm serious and mad, you get ticked off. When I am hard on you, you get, I don't want to say the word because some of you get upset and you think it's a bad word. I don't think it's a bad word, but you think it's a bad word. You get really ticked off. But God keeps pounding and pounding. Well, maybe I'm a retard, or maybe I'm slow, or maybe I'm missing it. Or maybe God is trying to tell you something. Because I watch all of you. You don't think I'm watching, you don't think I'm paying attention, but I watch all of you. You come in here, and uh, you, there's times you come in here and you worship like nobody's business. There's times that you draw on those that are prof- prophetic and you want something spoken into your life. You come in here, and, and you're on fire for a little bit, and then, then things come against you, and you, you, you've settled down. You come in here, and, and, and you're going to give it all that you got, and then you, then you stop. There's times that I've spoken to many of you, most of you, and I've, t- I've, I've told you that, that, that God has a call on your life. And some of you press and, 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 pro- and move for it, and, you, and, you, and you're all hungry with me, and, you, and you're all like, tell me more and, 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 and show me, and, and I come, I'm going to come alongside your pastor, and I want to be what God's called me to be. And you, you have this drive to be what God's called you to be, and you're all excited about it, and then it wanes. And then, then, then there's, if you don't go on the call, it's, it's, you're all excited about life and everything's good and everything's grand and then something comes against you. And you get ticked off and you roam and we have to go chase you. Promise you money to get you back in. And some of them say, wait, who, who got money? I didn't get no money. <laughs> Now, just plain and simple, wherever you put your foot, you can have. But if you break down what that's saying, it's saying this. Wherever you'll curve, I'll give you the power to produce and receive and get what I've told you to get. I, I, I didn't give those words definitions. God did. And I know a lot of you hate talking or me talking about producing with God because all of us are perverted and we think of sex. I mean, that's the truth. We, all, we can only put it in a sexual content. But it's the same thing as taking a seed into the ground and you split the ground open and you put the seed in and you bury it. And then you wait. And you wait. And you wait. And it rains, and it rains, and it rains. And then you hoe, and you hoe, and you hoe, and you hoe, and you pull, and you pull, and you pull weeds, and then a blade comes up. And then it rains, and then it rains, and it rains, and it rains, and you hoe. And then you say, forget it, but that's not the word you use. And you throw a fit, and you come over here, and you sit. And you're not touching that seed. You're not touching the ground. You're not touching none of it. You don't care. Screw pastor. Screw the church. Screw them all. He's an but. I 
ain't doing it. The problem is that the seed is still growing. But when you're over here, yeah, thank you, Lord, amen. But when you're over here throwing a pow fit, you're, you're not putting any water on it, and you're not getting the weeds, but it's still growing. And when you get through throwing your fit and getting upset, you have to come back over and clean up the weeds and start watering. And though it's still growing, it's retarded now. Because it's stumped in its growth. Right? So until you have good cultivation, until you have good water, until the sun shines on it strong, because you've cleared out all the weeds, it doesn't begin to grow again. And what God is telling us is that I want you to hold out your hand and let me put the seed in your hand and let you grab hold of and let me begin to produce with you and to, so you can go in and obtain your promised land. So however it works for you, however the analogy fits for you, whether it's seed, whether it be uh, procreation, however the, the, the terminology works for you, what you've got to do is receive the seed. But there's so many of us that receive, but we sit there. You are the seed. You're the farmer. You're the rain. You're the sun. And he said, no, I'm not the son of Christ. Yeah, you're his body. So it puts it in your hand. You're waiting for Jesus to come, but it's in your hand to open that word and begin to read. That's the sun shining on it. It's in your hands to get at this altar at your be- in your bedroom and praise him like nobody's business and let the presence come and let rain come down on the seed. It's your job to get rid of the weed. We're wanting the pastor to do it. Pastor's bringing a bulldozer. (laughs) Getting this done quick. I'm done. I got stuff I got to do. If you want one weed at a time, pull your own weeds. (laughs) Every place you step, Israel, People of God, the point, every place you step, God gives us every place where we go and are led by the word. Every place we go, your family, your work, your ministry, your finances. What's another one? What's important to you? I'm talk- Relationship. Kids. Grandkids. <laughs> but you got to have the kids to get to the grandkids. Kids. <laughs> Ministry. Every place. work. Every place that you go. Every place that you have something to do. Every place that you... What's important to you? See, what you don't understand is God loves you and he's in your bedroom when you're crying. He's in your, uh, in your, in your whining. He's there the whole time. You're whining in your car. Every time, you, me and Pastor Nett love this. We always talk about this. Every time you look in the mirror and you start crying more because you're looking at how sad you are. He's there. He's sitting with you. He loves you that much. He's concerned with you, but he is not going to patronize you. He's not going to pull the weeds for you. He is not going to shine the word on you. You know, When I say that, God can do anything, and there's times that God shows up for his purposes, and it's for his purposes, but for most of the part, most of the time, he's looking and expecting you to do it. See, for some reason, he expects us to do all the work. I don't know. If I was God, I'd have you do all the work, too. I know. Exactly. He did it first. He did his work. He's done. He spoke. He put it in in our hands. He put it in our hands. He said, it's your job. Go. Go do. He said, these things I do, you're going to do greater. You're going to do greater. And and what do you think those things are? Some of it's raising the dead. Some of it's healing people. But a lot of it is doing your family, doing your life 
as a, an offering as glory and honor to the Lord. And most of us in here desire that because we wouldn't be in church this morning. We would have stayed home with the rest of the heathens that are, our, that are in our church. Every place that you put your foot. See, when you walk into your home, you're home. When you get into your car, your car. When you walk into your office, into your office. When you walk onto the job, then your job. When you walk into the ministry and start doing the ministry. When you walk into the bank, your finances. When you walk into uh, uh, any place that produces money for you, any place that, that brings profit to you. God's concerned about that. Because he wants you to bring it unto him and let him bless it so he can get more kids. Every one of us is an opportunity to birth people into the kingdom. So part of the thing is not to just to realize what God has for you, but the other part is to realize what God wants to do. We're so consumed with this. I, bow your heads real quick. And I, I, close your eyes. I want and nobody looking. Because I, 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 I don't want people to, see, people to see your face. Think about your prayer life. And think about what you prayed about the last time you prayed. How much of it was consumed with you? Are consumed with people you love? Okay. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But how often was it, God, who's on your heart? What do you want me to do? And see, subjecting ourselves into the heart of God, then, okay, now that I've sat with him and I see what he wants, he said, come on, I'm taking to a problem. They didn't say, hey, we want Canaan. Okay, you can raise up now. <laughs> Thank you for being so obedient. Most of the time, everybody's looking around. Who's trying to figure out what's going on? He, they didn't say, hey, God, we want Canaan. Now, they say, hey, God, get us out of here. But God already had a plan for what he was taking them to, right? So God's already got a plan for you. Now, like I said, when it rises up in you, it's pro, it's, it, mo most of the time it's from God. I don't want to say all the time. Sometimes y'all got some strange stuff and y'all need to heal it. But even if it's strange, even if it's wrong, if we submit it unto the Lord, the Lord will convert it back to what he originally designed, right? But God's, God said, I'm giving you Canaan. I'm giving you a promised land. So if we spend time with God and we see what God desires, then as that happens, then we see what promised land is, and then we know. See, the problem with Israel is they, they said, okay, we're going to the promised land. They never received the promise. They never said, okay, good, that sounds good. I want, I want the promised land. Because all they did was complain, I want to go back to where I was at. They never realized what they could really have. They never saw it. See, we talked about in Sunday school this morning, you've got to see it before you see it. You've got to see it in here. And then when you do that, every place you tread, you can have. Because, see, the word rises up. It's like you can't go in there and bulldoze your way through a, a, a ministry. You can't go in there and bulldoze your way through a, 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 a marriage Ch children, job, finances, all that. You can't make that happen. But if you let the word rise up into you and the Lord tells you this is what. See, see I know some of you can't, can't fathom this, but there's people in here that don't want a million dollars. They're okay with 10,000. But it's still the same to them. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not the amount, it's not the place, it's not the thing, it's the thing that comes from you and the Lord. And whatever that promise is, whatever he sp speaks into our heart, whatever he desires in our heart, that, then we let God lead us into that, and then, then, then we'll step every place he tells us to step. And when we do that, what's happening is we're already receiving before we're stepping. The stepping is the culmination of getting. The putting out the palm and receiving that's before we take, where it, before it lands. It's this, receiving, now we get it. See what I'm saying? So that's what he's telling us is, look, go, rise up, bow yourself, rise up. Rise, why is it rise up and then descend? What, you ever wonder what? He says, rise up, in, in verse 2, he says, rise up, now go to Jordan, descend. Because when he said Jordan to him, it was just like saying descend. You understand what I'm saying? It's like if I, you, if, if, if I said jump and jump, right? Jump is jump. When he said Jordan, it's descend. 
You understand what I'm saying to you? So as soon as he said that, arise, now descend. Put yourself in the right position. Put yourself in the right position. That's underneath me, and let me stay above you. Not because I'm a power freak, but because if you stay under my wings, I'll bless you. I bless you. And even when the, wind, when the enemy comes, I'll put my wings around you, and fire, fiery darts will come. It'll be difficult. It'll seem scary. It'll seem like they're going to consume you, but I've got you with me. And even if you die, you're with me. You're with me. See, one of, one of the hardest things for people to understand when Brianna died was my acceptance of what the Lord wanted to do and, and me not being angry at God. Like, he, he took your baby. I was like, she's with him. And I'm going to see her again. She's not in my past. She's in my future. And really, if I'm in Christ, I'm with her still right now. If I, come, if I, if I stay in Christ more, I'm going to experience her more now than I did when she was here. And people can't understand that. And you get all new agey stuff and all that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about knowing where she's at, knowing what's going on, communicating and feeling that she's in the presence of the king. I used to say, Jesus, kiss her for me. And I, and I, would, I, I would know when he did. Unfortunately, time passes and life consumes you. We don't say it as often. In the beginning, it was every week, every day. But being in Christ, you know. So how can we lose? Even in death, Satan has nothing on us. Nothing on us. He can't touch us. And he's saying to you today, let Jesus, let the word rise up in you. Then conform yourself to me. And let's go get what's in your heart. What's on your heart? I put it there. Verbalize it to me. Tell me. Come, let's go. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. Let's go get it. Bow your heads. Verse 4 says that I'm going to change the way you talk. I'm going to pu purify you. I'm going to bring great prosperity to you. You're going to break forth and break out. And every place that you're in fear, you're going to put under your feet. And you're going to have an anointing to touch people. And then verse 5 says, no man will be able to stand before you and place anything in front of your face and come between me and you. You will be face to face with me. You won't, I won't fail you, and I won't forsake you. Now listen to the king. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I won't forsake you, and I won't fail you. I won't forsake you, and I won't fail you. I'm taking you to the promised land. I'm taking you to the promised land. Now, what's your promised land? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Can you see it? Come on. Take a second. Can you see it? The king is saying, come on, let's go. Trust me. Trust me. Come 
Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word today, and I pray that each and every one of us would trust you, that we would allow the word of God to rise up in us and lead us into our promised land, that we would take the territory, understanding that there's different cities and different places, but we've got to lead, be led by you, and we've got to listen to you. We've got to let you be in control. Father, let this people say yes today. Let them no longer sit back. Let them no longer get frustrated. Let them no longer be drawn. Let them be led. Come on. Every, every heart, every heart focused on him. Every heart saying yes. Every heart saying yes today. Every heart saying yes today. The thing is, if you say yes, it's time to go to war. It's time to go to battle. You ready? Father, let them receive, let them be victorious. And let them conquer. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Shake hands, hug next, don't get mixed up. We'll see you Wednesday. Bring a friend, bring an enemy, bring somebody. Hit some music, Travis.